bodies of water, mammoth whales, immense schools of fish. But what sustains life in the ocean is too small to see with the naked eye. Plankton, the bountiful pastures of the sea. Oceans of the world brim with great and graceful swimmers, dolphins and whales. Rays, sea lions and sharks. These are the hallmark creatures of the deep. But it is the ocean's poorest swimmers, its tiniest organisms drifting at the mercy of the current and tides, that actually give life to the sea. Their name comes from the Greek word planktos, meaning wanderer. Plankton is the collective name for the microscopic plants and animals that populate the world's seas. They form the very basis of all marine food chains and are the dynamos of the ocean realm. By some counts, plankton is so numerous that a cubic meter of ocean may contain more organisms than there are humans on Earth. They sustain the planet's widest, if not most complex, ecosystem. Without plankton, the oceans would be barren. And yet, plankton dwells in mystery, in a world hidden from view. There are two principal categories of plankton. Phytoplankton, the plant-like organisms consisting mostly of minute unicellular algae. And zooplankton, which includes microscopic organisms of nearly every aquatic animal group. These animals include a smorgasbord of fish eggs and larvae, shrimp-like krill, and tiny crustaceans called copepods. Crustaceans, in fact, make up some 70% of all planktonic animals. It is here, in this minute fold, that the ocean food chain actually gets started, with plankton feeding on plankton. Phytoplankton actually serves as food for certain zooplankton, which is then eaten by larger zooplankton. It's the beginning of the virtually unending web that reaches across all marine life. And so, plankton provides the living world with one of its most staggering contradictions. How is it that some of the smallest creatures and plants on Earth can actually sustain the very largest? Great whales devour countless tons of plankton a day. To the Earth's leviathans, these minute protein-packed bundles are pure energy. Under the microscope, an eerie netherworld is revealed. Phytoplankton grow through photosynthesis, using the power of sunlight to build organic compounds from inorganic raw materials.
With their diverse structures, plankton algae also aid the ecosystem another way, by absorbing carbon dioxide and discharging oxygen. Zooplankton, in turn, taps this wellspring of solar energy. In daylight, the organisms remain deep in the water, but unlike their phylo counterparts, they can move at will. Under cover of darkness, zooplankton ascends and disperses to feed in surface waters, often on phytoplankton. Before dawn, the zooplankton regroups and dives. Some say this daily vertical migration allows for more effective feeding on phytoplankton and avoids surface predators. But wherever plankton floats, higher predators on the food chain are sure to lurk. For these hapless victims of a willful sea, there is no place to hide. The presence of plankton, seemingly infinite in number and wide in distribution, signals a banquet, a feeding frenzy for all that rely on its bounty. From majestic whales larger than ancient dinosaurs to the lowliest seabed dweller. In the deepest fold of a coral reef, Amid the inner sanctum of a current, microscopic battles are underway. Here the varied and vast armies of plankton eaters are on the front lines. They come in all shapes, sizes and colours. And they employ an almost mesmerising array of feeding strategies. Sea anemones spread their arms to pluck drifting plankton from the currents. Soft coral also branch out to capture prey floating amid the dense plankton soup. dinner guest arrives. A minuscule lobster climbs aboard the hungry coral, another link in the food chain hunting for passing quarry. With lightning reflexes, another lobster pickpockets a main course of plankton. It's so fast, even in slow motion, the theft is hard to discern. Barnacles employ filters to catch plankton that's pumped through their openings. But again, a competitor arrives, the snake-like pipefish. Clams also filter their catch. Using a special endoscopic camera, it's possible to follow the seawater as it travels through this clam's highly developed filtration system, one that includes small hairs, gills, and fine lashes. This purification system can actually filter out bacteria.
even fungus is outfitted with tiny grills that act like filters. Pipe eels stand with their heads against the tide, plucking plankton from the current. Should danger approach, they simply vanish into seabed hideouts. To reap an underwater harvest and satisfy their insatiable appetites for plankton, reef coral can muster a dazzling array of tactics. Some extend their polyps to feed on stray plankton. Equipped with tentacles, each polyp has a tiny oral cavity, a mouth, poised to devour captured prey. When irritated by light or some other disturbance, the polyps play hide-and-seek, withdrawing into the deepest recesses of the coral skeleton. Certain corals don't simply stretch themselves out. If plankton comes within range, the polyps actually seize them and latch on tight. Other corals can expand their tentacles like bubbles, forming a kind of combination prison cell greenhouse for their prey. Their captives are left to fatten up within before being devoured. Whip coral has earned its name. Covered with tentacles, it can snatch unseen prey with a movement so swift, it's the fastest in the entire animal kingdom. But plankton doesn't reserve its powers for the minute alone. It provides sustenance for larger predators as well. And their strategies of survival are no less elaborate. One of the most graceful, the manta ray. Gliding through the deep, mantas use large mouth flaps to guide plankton-rich seawater into their mouths. A complex filter system on their gills traps planktonic feed. Many fish on the food chain live off plankton only indirectly. Equipped with poisonous stingers, the red firefish feeds on other fish that feed on plankton. In the interplay between opportunists, powerful bonds are forged. An anemone feeds off morsels left by a clownfish, while the fish finds protection within its poisonous fold. Denizens of the deep are not the only ones who thrive on plankton. In a tide pool, flamingos take their place on the food chain. Water and planktonic organisms are pressed through sieves at the edge of their bills, enabling them to filter out a meal. For those who line the ocean's feeding trough, size isn't everything. The very largest rays, sharks and whales all feed directly upon the sea's tiniest creatures.
whales, the largest mammals on Earth, are divided into two major groups. Toothed whales, which eat fish and other animals like squid, and baleen whales, which have hundreds of thin plates instead of teeth. Like other plankton eaters, baleen whales use these unique plates equipped with brush-like fibers to filter and strain food from plankton-rich seawater. largest animal to ever inhabit the earth. These jumbos of the ocean can grow to more than 30 meters in length and weigh over 200 tons. To fuel their massive chassis, they can gorge relentlessly on more than four and a half tons of planktonic crustaceans a day. It's called krill and in spring and summer, it can blanket the sea's surface in a vast carpet of life. To the world's greatest leviathan, the vision offers a sprawling invitation to feast. The blue whale plows against the currents, driving as much as a thousand tons of water into its expandable throat. Then, in a massive shudder, it filters out planktonic organisms to ingest, an estimated 40 million a day. It needs that much food. It feeds only in summer, living off stored fat for up to eight months of the year. The fin whale is also a plankton eater. It's the fastest whale alive, renowned for its marine acrobatics. To feed on krill, it enlarges its throat to nearly double the normal diameter. Like most baleen whales, a fin whale swims with its mouth open, flooding the gates with swarms of plankton. Grey whales try a different tack. They live primarily in shallow water, closer to shore than any other large whales. No other whale feeds quite like the massive grey. They scour the bottom of the ocean, sometimes ploughing their heads sideways through mud and sand to stir up prey. Right whales pursue plankton with an insatiable appetite. With baleen instead of teeth, they swim steadily along at about five kilometers per hour, their mouths agape. Their diet consists mainly of the smallest of marine animal life forms, zooplankton. When a sufficient mouthful has been filtered by the inner bristles of the baleen plates, right whales then force out the water, dive, and swallow their bounty. In the waters off Argentina, an exceptional sight is captured on film. A southern right whale mother and her calf scour the deep.
Shortly, the mother will inject its krill-enriched milk into the hungry calf's mouth. In fact, they were dubbed right whales for a grim reason. Once, these were deemed the right kind of whale to hunt. Feeding for krill means they move slowly, and their search drives them within easy reach, close to land. For a thousand years, whalers have been laying siege to the species. Today, the right whale is endangered, one of the rarest of large mammals. Widespread pollution now adds to the toll, depleting supplies of plankton and disrupting natural food cycles that go back tens of millions of years. Pollution is a scourge to plankton, and plankton eaters one and all. Someday, that may well include us. Researchers are now considering protein-packed plankton as a direct food source for humans. Some believe, in time, it may become the chief food supply of the world. On dry land, plankton holds much promise as well in the medical world. For now, plankton will only indirectly make its way to the human tier of the food chain by sustaining fisheries worldwide. But here at the very base of the food chain, as they have for tens of millions of years, the pastures of the sea form a flourishing secret garden. Plankton provides a veritable fountain of life for a vibrant community, as vast as the world is wide. Day in, day out, far and wide across the oceans, it is mealtime, and the smallest and weakest swimmers of the sea are first on the menu.